into the Pac-12. This is our only college football topic of the day because I don't want to talk about all the negative stuff with the idea of, of schedules moving and yeah. whatever else. Well, Inter- we don't have any information either. So. Yeah, not not yet. Uh, we will have something on the Ivy League tomorrow, which could kind of set a precedent, which but we'll, we'll dive gonna into dis- that tomorrow. I'm going to disagree with that. The SEC don't give one hot red damn what the Ivy League does. Okay. I will, I will bet every dollar I got on that. They might do the same thing, but it ain't because those guys did it. No, 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 no. The Ivy League doesn't, like, they're not going to, anyway, we'll talk about that tomorrow. That, that, that Tomorrow is when that's going to go. Uh, Damien jumped back in and said Cap wants to play. I, I don't he think just he signed a monster TV deal. You can't sign TV deals and want to play. Yeah, it's just. There's not enough hours in the day to do both. Yeah, it, it really. Especially if you haven't played in four years. No, you got it right. So, but anyway, off of the Kaepernick stuff, off of whatever else, Pac-12. John Canzano, who writes for the Oregonian, look, this guy knows the Pac-12 in and out better than anybody else, maybe in the world. He is the one that wrote all of the the investigative pieces last summer and and for years before. He has been all in on Larry Scott and the Pac-12. He's the one that that told everybody how much they make, how much they pay in San Francisco for their headquarters, et cetera, et cetera, right? This interesting article, I'm going to read a little bit of it so that you can get the, the premise of where we're going with this. Yep. Employees at the Pac-12 conference and Pac-12 networks were enjoying the first hours of a scheduled holiday week office closure last Wednesday when they were hit with a sobering staff-wide email from Commissioner Larry Scott. The conference bosses had ordered pay cuts. Scott relayed the bad news to the staff via an email obtained by the Oregonian Oregon Live. Scott wrote, our CEO group approved our conference budget for this coming year, which includes a 9% overall decrease in expenses, along with salary reductions for employees making over $100,000 in annual salary. The salary reductions were effective immediately and will remain in effect for the next 12 months. Employees making six figures received pay reductions ranging from 5 to 10%. Scott, who makes $5.3 million, revealed in the email that he would be taking a compensation reduction of 12%. The quote is, you do the math. One long-time Pac-12 employee said, people are trying to survive in San Francisco. Simply put, Scott should have cut his salary in half and saved the staff from cuts that crushed staffers. Um, We've talked about this forever, about how much they're paying to be in San Francisco when other conferences are paying pennies to be in smaller cities, smaller spaces, cutting expenses back. Because why on earth would you host your your television network in a place where it costs so damn much. Downtown San Francisco is some of the most expensive real estate property in the world. It's absurd. Hang on. The SEC network is based out of a state that doesn't have an SEC football team. Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Because it's cheap. Yeah. But and on top of that, the Atlanta, SEC. You know why they're not in Nashville? The two cities in the SEC are the two biggest cities because those cities are Marketably more expensive to be in than Birmingham, than Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, and, and Birmingham is where the SEC office is located. Well, and nobody wants that's not big enough to be there. Can't that, have it there. That's not big enough. That's cheap. You still have to be in a big city with a major international airport. Okay. That's a must. You got to get talent in and out. I, yeah. I understand you need to be in a big city. They can't go to Spokane. All right. I understand Spokane would be cheap. They can't go there but they could go to many other cities far cheaper than that. Me and you've said this before. Last three years, Larry Scott should have been hurled out a window, yes. okay, and just just beaten to a pulp and, and just launched launched across the, 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 the Grand Canyon when he's fired. This guy, his pay cut should go to 100% pay cut. Oh, yeah. Well, and, so this and here's, report, here's what we're getting get to. to. Me the report. This report is they're considering buying him out. Well, let, let, me, let me get into it. Let me get into it. It says, there's serious talk amongst the Pac-12 CEO group, said one high-level conference administrator, to end his contract ahead of the expiration date to have a fighting chance to save the conference networks. This is what's nuts. The Pac-12 network reaches fewer than 18 million households. He. He That's signed it. so many bad deals and cost that conference so much money. He took major college football programs 
monsters like USC and Oregon, up and coming monsters like Washington, and he's crippled them monetarily compared to the Big Ten, the SEC, and coming up the ACC. Yeah. Because he's bad at his job. No one else did this. No other entity or faction affected this. He has been poor at his job for too long, and they've signed too many bad deals, and therefore they are falling woefully behind when they have facilities and universities that should be competing at elite levels. Yes, 100%. Um, ben jumps in and said they should go to Vegas uh, or Phoenix. And well, Vegas would be the best place for them if you're talking fi- financially. Yeah, uh, because you, you don't, don't have, have to be a, right I, in the I middle. Like, I like that they're in a, the SEC's in a state in an area where they don't have – the only place that I would be okay with them going to would be Nashville because nobody's worried about them being biased to Vanderbilt. All right. But like, other than that, I like that they're in a place where I don't have to worry about too many locals running the program. Yeah. Yeah. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, and Vegas it, is a lot cheaper than anywhere in California. Yes. I mean, you can get, you can get spots out there. For, and you can, and you can fly people in and out of there just ridiculously cheap. The, the biggest issue that he has right now, obviously coaches and when I, there's a lot of people that want Larry Scott out. Right, he has not run this thing very well. He tried to do things differently, but he didn't put a lot of forethought into this. And now, rather than cutting his own salary in half or by even more, he decided to cut everybody, all of his staffers and whatnot that are at the network. Taking a guy making a hundred grand a year and dropping him to ninety is a big deal when that person lives in in San Francisco. Yes. That's a massive deal. And on top of that, you've done that with a ton of different staffers there that were on your side. Now they're gone. And now they're not. So now there's nobody left on your side. If, if he has any skeletons in his closet, they are coming out. All these people yeah. are going to dime his ass out. And I would too. It is, it's a bad look. And it, to come out and brag that you took a 12% pay cut when these other guys that are making a one one hundredth of what you make You've been the like, reason your conference is hemorrhaging money. Yes. It, it is not a good look. But, that, but hang on now. These commissioners, these, these presidents are the ones that re-upped his deal when he was really bad at his job already. He didn't, he didn't just get paid and get this big deal and then all of a sudden start being bad at his job. He got a second contract after being really bad at his job. So they got to own some of this shit. Okay. Yeah, the, the presidents do. Uh, but not they the ADs, not the, to. you know. They weren't the ones that no, voted no, against the president. No, no, not the staffers. Not even that. No, no, no. no I'm the talking about like the need to own the fact. All the flaws that are going on with this guy, with Larry Scott, are the presidents have to wear all of that. Oh yes, and yes, they need 100%. to. They need to find a, somebody to come in that place and shake it up, man. So with with the CEO group looking at the idea of buying him out now, um, we'll see what happens next. I mean, who knows I'm who sure could he end up being the next guy? He gets bought out because I'm going to bet his buyout's big ass shit. No, oh, I bet it's massive. I bet it's massive, but it looks to be coming up pretty soon. So we'll see. Uh, but that's very interesting stuff that's going on right now. You wouldn't expect that right before a football season, but it's gotten to a breaking point. So we'll keep an eye on the Pac-12. We'll see what's going on with that. Let's move on 